12 News is your local election headquarters. President-elect Joe Biden continues to try to move forward with his transition. This as President Donald Trump maintains he is the rightful winner. President Trump has filed lawsuits in several states where the race is close. Tonight, we're hearing from local Trump campaign officials who are split on the president's current path forward. 12 News reporter Brandon Druid is live in Providence with what local Trump campaign members are saying tonight. Brandon? Well, Mike and Shannon, President Donald Trump is known for his rock-solid base of supporters. In fact, more than 71 million of them voted for him in this election alone. It all comes as locally the leaders of his campaign are really split on what he should be doing next. A week after Election Day and President Donald Trump is moving ahead with a flurry of lawsuits. He has every right to be doing what he's doing. The president and his team have filed lawsuits in several states, all of them where the vote is, in their view, close. There's a Hail Mary pass here somewhere, possibly, you know, but nothing's been validated. Not one state has been certified. Doreen Costa is a co-chair for the Trump RI campaign. She says she doesn't want the president to give up the fight. I think we're crying over spilled milk. Her fellow co-chair, Jerry Zarella, says he'd be up for the fight, but says there's not enough meat to the lawsuits being filed. The path that I look at, and as I look at the states, I see that's a path that I don't think he could win. No matter who wins, both saying they want to see the president on January 20th taking part in Inauguration Day. He should be there, you know, just out of respect for the seat, um, but it is Donald Trump, so you never know what he could possibly do. We love the president, but... It's time. Let's just do things in a classy way and let's leave with dignity. Sorella is also calling for a smooth transfer of power. The agency responsible for those transition teams so far has not officially started that process. Some are concerned that that might give a new administration a late start. Live in Providence, Brandon True at 12 News. President Trump continues to challenge the election results, making unsubstantiated claims of fraud. 12 News reporter Brandon Truitt talked to the Rhode Island co chairs of the Trump campaign today and has their reaction. Brandon? Well, Mike and Shannon, the race was called for President elect Joe Biden on Saturday. The states still have to certify those votes. In the meantime, we are learning that local leaders of the Trump campaign are split on what direction they think he should move heading forward. I think we're crying over spilled milk. You can't concede if the election's not over with yet. A rare crack in an otherwise rock solid foundation amongst the president's supporters. As it stands now, President Donald Trump has filed lawsuits in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Several have been knocked down, judges saying they lacked legal backing or evidence. And just today, the president's lawyers asking a judge in Pennsylvania to block certifying election results there. I don't know, he, he might be a little bit disappointed with me asking that he should concede, but it's eventually he, he needs to do that. Jerry Sorella helped run the president's campaign in Rhode Island, suggesting legacy is on the line. 50 years from now, people are going to read about this election. They're going to read about this virus. You know, how do you want them to read it? Sorella's fellow co-chair, Doreen Costa, says she's not there yet. I mean, there's a Hail Mary pass here somewhere, possibly, you know, but nothing's been validated. Not one state has been certified. Costa says she believes her views align with more Republicans. I have not heard that from anybody else, and they actually are commending me for saying, okay, keep up the fight. There is common ground. Costa and Zarella saying they want to see the president take part in Inauguration Day, no matter the outcome. And he should be there. He's the most powerful man in the world, and he's turning his power over to somebody else. To this, in terms of the transition teams, as of right now, the General Services Administration or the GSA has not signed an official document to get that started. It will essentially release funding, office space, and really the manpower to ensure a safe and effective transfer of power. The Trump appointee over that administration has yet to sign that document, and the Biden team tonight saying that they are considering legal action if she doesn't do it soon. Live in Providence, Brandon True at 12 News.